Amen. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We love you, Uganda. You're like a second home to us. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for embracing us. Even though we're not there physically, amen, we're there spiritually. Amen. We want to go into the word of God and we thank God for this great theme that was given to David. I know that it came from God. Amen. Uh, Exodus 9, 1, it says, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Amen. Is go and tell so that you may go and serve. Go and tell that you may go and serve. I know a lot of people are on lockdown right now because of COVID, but we know that God is a healer. I know God is a healer. Amen. In 2012, I suffered a stroke while I was in Uganda, but God has healed me. I can talk. I can walk. Amen. I can lift my hands and give God praise. So we know God is a healer. We bind the COVID virus in the name of Jesus, and we lose the power of the Holy Ghost. Just a couple of weeks ago, I had a couple of family members call me, and they told me that they had uh, tested positive for COVID. And their doctors had told them that if they got it because they had pre-existing conditions, that they would die. Amen. But I said, you will not die. You will live and declare the works of the Lord. And so both of them are fine. That was several weeks ago. They had no symptoms. Amen. God healed them. God delivered them. I want you to know that God is a healer. This is a man-made virus, but we know that God is greater than any man-made virus. Amen. The Bible tells us that the Lord said unto Moses, amen. We have to know that in the cultural context, this was the day after the plague of flies was removed, amen. And he told him to go in unto Pharaoh. He had to go to Pharaoh boldly. He had to go to Pharaoh without any fear of him or any fear of his court, amen. I'm telling you that we're living in a time when we have to have no fear, thank you, Jesus, of those that are in governmental positions. There's a government that's been raised up even as Pharaoh was, he didn't know who Joseph was. He didn't know the greatness of Joseph. There are people that don't know the greatness of Jesus Christ. They don't know the greatness of God. Amen. But we have to go boldly. We have to go without fear. That's why I praise God that this annual ministers conference is going on, that you are going forth boldly and without fear. Amen. Of him, uh, of the government, of the court. Amen. Because the thing about it is you can put people on lockdown, but you cannot lock down the church. You cannot lock down the people of God. Amen. You cannot lock down our testimony. You cannot lock down our prayer. You cannot lock down the word of God. The word of God will go where people can't go. Even though I'm not there, the word of God is there. Amen. We can send our prayer there in the name of Jesus. The Lord told him, amen. The Lord said unto Moses, amen. God is speaking unto his church. God is speaking unto us. The Lord told him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. Amen. I praise God that, that we serve is greater than any other God. Amen. Because of the internet, because of the globalization of the world through the internet, because of social media, because of all these social media platforms, people are worshiping many different types of gods. Amen. They're worshiping the sun God. They're worshiping the gods of Egypt and the gods of our ancestors and the gods of our fathers. Amen. But I praise God that the Bible lets us know that God is above every other God. Amen. That God has a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. He said, go tell them that the Lord God of the Hebrews. Amen. God is the God of Abraham. He's the God of Isaac. He's the God of Jacob. Amen. He's our God. And he's greater than the other God. He's greater than the God of Nigeria. Greater than the goddess Oshun. And greater than Osiris and greater than all these ancient gods that existed. He's the God that created all the other gods. Amen. We are to speak in the name of Jehovah. We are to speak in, to, in the name of the God that the Hebrews worshiped. Amen. And who, who owns them for his people. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pastures. Amen. 
The world belongs to him. God has a special love for you. God has a special love for me. And God takes special care of us. Amen. I'm here to declare prophetically, amen, that COVID-19 has no power over you. Amen. We have power over COVID-19 in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We are not ashamed, amen, to be called the people of God. And we are not ashamed to call our God, amen, as poor and as oppressed as people might be, amen, you have to understand that during this time, the uh, Egyptians were oppressing the people of God, amen, the people of God were poor, they were not wealthy, amen, but they still knew that they were a God that was more powerful than the gods of the Egyptians. We serve a God that is more powerful than any other God that can be named, amen. And he told them to let my people go, amen, that's the theme of the conference, let my people go. But there was a reason why they had to be let go. They had to be let go that they might serve God. Amen. That they might worship him. Amen. And and you have to understand that this, this plague was, was one of several. Amen. The plague of the flies and the demand had been made to let the people go. Amen. And even though the demand, amen, was reasonable to let God's people go, to understand that Pharaoh refused it. Amen. I'm here to tell you that the enemy, the devil, amen, the enemy of your soul refuses to let you go, amen. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to decree that your freedom, amen, that our freedom, the freedom of the church, amen, has already been decreed by God, amen. We must understand that the book of Exodus is a narrative of the sacred history of Israel from its sojourn in Egypt to the completion of the tabernacle. Amen. I'm here to tell you that what God has begun, he will finish it. Amen. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the plan of God is going to come to pass no matter what happens. Amen. No matter what happens in our no matter what happens in our world, the plan of God is going to come to completion. Amen. We have to understand also that there's a narrative interjection in the Bible that tells us that Moses and Aaron were aged 80 and 83 when they spoke before Pharaoh. That seems like they're very old. Amen. It seems like it's a long time, you know, age 80 and age 83. And they've been waiting for the promises of God. Egypt. Amen. The Israelites had been in uh, captivity in Egypt for over 400 years. And they're waiting. Deliverance of the people of God is drawing near. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming soon. There are things in place now where the enemy is trying to set up the um, uh, trying to put the structure in place for a new world order. Amen. Trying to digitally track people. Amen. Trying to make people fear. Amen. But the people of God, we don't fear. We have faith in God. Amen. You have to understand that the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will prevail. Amen. It will be strengthened. It will be completed in spite of opposition. Amen. The kingdom of God is going to endure in spite of opposition. We rebuke COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I've known many people. We we have several people, even my spiritual parents, my spiritual father, my spiritual mother. One is 72 years old. One is 65 years old. Uh, they were supposed to, they contracted COVID-19. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that virus. Amen. And God healed them. Amen. They, these were people that had pre-existing conditions and God healed them. I'm here to declare unto you that you will not die, but you will live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I need you to say that with me. I will not die, but I will live and I will declare the works of the Lord. Amen. You have to understand that 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 that, that the preservation, amen of Israel, why they were in Egypt, suggested, amen, that they were not slaves as a lot of people have preached, amen, but they could retain their cultural traditions. They could keep their families together, amen. I'm here to tell you that even though we're living in the midst of a global pandemic, amen, we can preserve our cultural traditions, amen. We can preserve our worship. We can preserve the name of Jesus Christ. We can preserve our faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that you must understand is that the church will continue to increase. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, that 70 descendants of Jacob entered into Egypt. Only 70 descendants, amen, of Jacob entered into Egypt. 
But by the time they left, amen, they were a great multitude. They were strong in number. They had increased. By the time the church leaves the earth realm, it is going to be great in number. There is going to be an increase. Amen. There's going to be an increase of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that we are on the verge of the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. Amen. I prophetically declare increase in the church that even though people are trying to stop the church, they're trying to stop us from meeting. Amen. We will continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will continue to have church. Amen. Even though we've been in the United States, amen, and we've been on lockdown, uh, quote unquote lockdown, we've never stopped having church. Amen. We have church every Sunday. Amen. Amen. We don't believe that the government can put, amen, uh, uh, things in place that say we can't have church. Amen. Our orders come from God. We are here to obey the word of God. We are here to obey the decrees of God, the commandments of God, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, amen, but to exhort one another daily, amen, while it is called today, amen. We praise God that the church will increase. Say that with me. The church will increase, amen. Say that one more time. The church will increase in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We have to understand that from this family of 70 people, that went into Egypt, an entire nation would spring forth in fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. God has made you some promises, and God will fulfill those promises. Those promises will come to pass in spite of opposition. Those promises will come to pass in the name of Jesus. We praise God, amen, that the power of God is still moving in our earth realm, amen, in spite of the global pandemic. Another point that I need to make is that people are now in governmental positions of power who know nothing of the power of the church, amen. They know nothing of the power of the church. We have to understand that after some unspecified period of time, a new king arose who knew nothing of Joseph. He knew nothing of what Joseph had done for Egypt, amen. The king saw in the Israelites a foreign people who stood aloof from the rest of Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. Amen. We have to understand that the church stands apart from the world. Amen. And, and the world doesn't understand how the church is still growing in number, how people are still having testimonies, how people are still preaching the gospel. Amen. While the church is still growing in number and in strength, even though we're separate from the world, we're still growing. Amen. We're still increasing. Amen. And, and, and the king made an observation that the people of Israel were stronger than the Egyptians. Amen. And he was re probably referring to, you know, individual strength, not collective strength, because the Israelites were toughened by hard labor. They were toughened by poverty. They were toughened by um, adverse living situations. And it's amazing, though, how they continue to prosper. The church will continue to prosper in spite of opposition, in spite of adversity. The church will continue to prosper in the name of Jesus. And so we have to understand that the Hebrews, they were, they were certainly a lower social class. They were toiled. They were forced to build. They built the store cities that were in Egypt. Amen. But they continued to grow. They continued to increase. Amen. A lot of people look at Christians. They look at believers and they say, well, they're a lower class. They're not the elite class. Amen. But yet we continue to thrive. Why? Because the grace of God is upon us. The blessings of God is upon us. And I'm here to declare unto you that the grace of God is upon you. The blessings of God is upon you. That you will continue to increase. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Another point I need to make to you is that you've been singled out for divine destiny corporately amen amen i praise god when when i first met bishop chiganda there was no kingdom tv amen when i first met him the uh we would walk around the grounds and we would pray amen we would pray for sewage we would pray for amen new land and new buildings amen and now i see those promises come to pass amen i'm here to tell you that it's only the beginning that the best is yet to come God still has more in store for you. Amen. One of the things uh, we've done also is that God spoke to Moses. Amen. I believe that God is speaking to some of you now. 
Amen. Some of you have divine destiny. Amen. Both of the parents of Moses were of the house of Levi, the tribe that would later be singled out for divine service. Amen. Uh, when, when Moses was only three months old, the mother, amen, relinquished to hope that it might be taken for adoption. Amen. She, 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 she took precautions to make sure she lined the reed basket. Amen. With pitch. And she didn't desire to drown the infant. Amen. There was a, a call out that all the male infants had to die. Amen. But she was determined to keep him alive. Amen. You must understand. You must walk in faith in this season. You must determine that you will not die, but you will live in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. The, uh, when we look at the culture of, of, of Egypt and back in that time, they would, mothers would take orphan children. Mothers today, they take their children and they put them at a doorstep of someone to take care of them. These mothers would take and put their infants in baskets, hoping that someone would, amen, adopt their children. Amen. And so that lets me know that God is in control of everything. God is in control of your life. He's in control of my life. Amen. I'm, I'm a witness, amen, of what God can do, that God is a healer. I'm someone who who's had brain aneurysms, amen. I've had strokes, amen, in the name of Jesus, but God has delivered me, amen. I can still talk. I can still walk. I lay hands on the sick, and the sick recover in the name of Jesus. The church is getting ready to move into a demonstration of miracles, a demonstration of the miraculous. The lame are going to walk again. The blind are going to see again. Amen. The deaf are going to hear again. We are going to see miracles taking place in our churches. I believe that miracles are taking place even now during this conference. I believe that there are people that are being healed now in the name of Jesus. We bind high blood pressure. We bind diabetes. We bind cancer. Amen. We loose the power of the Holy Ghost into your life. Amen here to represent God. Amen. Moses went in unto Pharaoh. Amen. As God's representative, you have divine destiny to be his representative in the earth realm. God is in control of everything. Amen. It's amazing how the daughter of Pharaoh happened to be bathing in the river when she discovered the reed basket. Amen. She, in, she instructed one of her maids to retrieve it and she discovered that there was a baby there, amen, who was clearly Hebrew in race, amen. I'm here to tell you that the church has experienced its infancy, amen, but the church is about to experience its maturity. We're going to see it that is mature, a church that has grown up. Moses, amen, could not go to Pharaoh when he was an infant and say, let my people go. He had to wait until he was mature. The church of Jesus Christ is maturing. Amen. It's maturing in holiness. It's maturing in righteousness. Amen. It's maturing in the will of God and what God wants it to do. Amen. And when you are mature, you can go to the Satan and say, let my people go. Amen. There's a level of maturity that the church is coming to that the enemy won't be able to handle. Amen. There's a level of maturity that you are coming to. Amen. Where you will declare the words of the Lord without fear, amen, but in faith. You will declare to governmental authorities. You will declare, amen, not out of rebellion, not out of disrespect, amen, but because it is the word of the Lord to let my people go in the name of Jesus. Isn't it amazing how Moses' sister was there, Miriam, amen, and Moses' sister asked if she could seek a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby, amen, and how the Hebrew woman that she asked was Moses's mother. Amen. Amen. We, we have to understand that God is in control of everything. God is in control of the COVID-19 virus. God is in control of the new world order. God is allowing things to happen. Amen. To separate the true from the false, to separate the lies from the, uh, uh, amen, from the truth. Amen. From the deception that the enemy is trying to perpetrate upon people. Amen. I praise God that the discovery of Jesus Christ is manifesting itself. Amen. That we are coming to realize who Jesus Christ really is. He's not a myth. He's not a fable. Amen. He's not just a story to tell, but he's a living reality. He's a living person. And the church is maturing in his understanding of who Jesus Christ is. 
It's maturing in its understanding of what the word of God really is. The word of God gives us power. The word of God gives us authority. The word of God, amen, gives us the ability to make decrees, amen, amen, to, to, to set in place God's order in the earth realm, amen. I praise God that whenever we travel to Uganda, I'm amazed, amen. I see how, I see the intelligence of the people there, amen. I see the strength of the people there. I see the anointing of the people there, amen. God has anointed you for such a time as this, amen. God anointed Moses for such a time as that to declare unto Pharaoh to let my people go, amen. It's amazing, even Moses' name, amen, it means something, amen. Pharaoh's daughter named the child Moses, amen, because she had water. The name Moses means son of, amen. How many of you know that you are a son of the living God, amen? Even if you're female, amen, you are a son of the living God. Because in Christ is neither male nor female, amen. There's neither rich nor poor. God has made us all equal in Jesus Christ. I know you're from Africa and I, I know you think that you're from a third world country. But once you've been born again, once you've been baptized, amen, in the Holy Spirit, baptized in water, amen. You have to understand that ma that makes us all equal in the name of God. You are a kingdom of God citizen, amen. You are a son of the living God, amen. Amen. Uh, some people say that Moses could be a, a form of Moses sway. Amen. Son of water. Amen. Meaning that he was drawn from the water. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that with loving kindness, Jesus Christ has drawn us? Amen. I'm here to tell you, I feel the anointing of God. I feel the deliverance of God. I feel the virtue of God. I know that God is healing someone. God is delivering someone. We bind the witch doctors. We bind the witches. We bind the curses, those things that have kept you, amen, from the living God. We bind those things in the name of Jesus. Even traveling to Africa and traveling to villages, we've seen, amen, witch doctors, amen, become born again. Witch doctors confess the authority of Jesus Christ and the power of God, amen. I praise God because we have to understand also that Moses had to return to Egypt. Moses had left Egypt, but God sent him back to Egypt to speak to Pharaoh. Amen. Sometimes we got to go back to the places that God called us from. Amen. Uh, God foretold that Pharaoh would not let the Israelites go, even in the face of all the miracles that Moses would present. Amen. The scripture repeatedly says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, not in denial of free will, but in testimony of how providence can bring good even out of evil. Amen. You have to understand that this situation that we're in, God is going to be glorified. It's going to work together for our good in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to see an increase in finances. We're going to see an increase in wealth. We're going to be able to perpetuate the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. You are going to do that. God is going to use you to do that. Even in the face of all the opposition, in the face of all the evil, Watch how God triumphs. Amen. Watch how God delivers his people. Watch how God lets his people go. Amen. Exodus chapter 4, verse 23. The verse says, I have said to thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And thou wouldest not let him go. Behold, I will kill thy son, thy firstborn. Amen. That lets me know that there's retribution. There's retribution. This vengeance that God will exercise upon our enemies. If they do not allow us to serve him, God, amen, is going to exact his vengeance. He's going to execute his vengeance upon people. Amen. Amen. We have to understand, amen, that also uh, there was a difference between Egypt and Goshen. Amen. That with all the pestilence that plagued Egypt, Amen. It did not plague the people of God. It did not plague the people that were in Goshen. Amen. I'm here to tell you that COVID-19 will plague the unbeliever, but it will not plague the believers in the name of Jesus. It will plague the unbelievers, but it will not plague the believers. We have power and authority over it because God holds his church apart from the world. Amen. Just as God held Israel apart from Egypt. He holds his church apart from the world. 
God will spare his people, amen, from the plagues. He will spare his people from the pestilence in the name of Jesus. I declare unto you, I prophetically declare that you are spared from COVID-19, amen. You are spared from the plague, amen. And if you contract it, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You will be healed, amen. You know, my brother-in-law called me uh, just two days ago to tell me that uh, the, his doctor told him that if he caught COVID-19, that he would die. Amen. And so he contracted it. He tested positive for it. But God healed him. And he said they wanted to take his blood and send his blood to Harvard University because what happened was he had no symptoms whatsoever. Amen. He had no response to it even though he tested positive he had no fever he had no sickness he had nothing amen he had no shortness of breath amen thank you jesus i praise god that we have the power amen over covid19 in the name of jesus amen god holds believers apart from unbelievers amen that lets us know that god is making a division amen between the people of god and unbelievers. He's making a division. Amen. There's some people even in the church. They don't know which direction they want to go. They don't know which way they want to go. But God is making a clear division between the faithful and between the fearful. And I'm here to tell you that when God makes that division, Pharaoh has to let God's people go so that they may worship him. Amen. Amen. And, and notice that when Moses prayed for the plagues to be ended, that Pharaoh would renege on his promises. He would he would say, okay, you know, I'll let the people go. But then when Moses would pray and the plague would stop, then he would want to bring them back into bondage again. Amen. But I believe that the church now is living in a day and age where we are going to be free to go and to worship God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have to understand that God makes a distinction between his people and the people of the world. God will always take care of his people. God will always protect his people. Amen. So I just praise God for this opportunity. Thank you, Bishop David, for giving us an opportunity. Amen. To share the word of God with you one more time. We want you to know that we love you. And even though we're not there physically, we're there spiritually. Amen. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Amen. And as you have this conference, Amen. We just pray that people will be saved. Amen. That lives will be changed. Amen. As they have been in years past and it will continue to be changed. Amen. We thank God that you are advancing the kingdom of God, that you are planting churches. Amen. That people are being saved. People are being delivered. People are being raised up in leadership positions. Amen. To perpetuate the gospel of Jesus Christ in the church. Amen. So thank you so much for this time. God bless you. Let my people go. We declare that you are free in the name of Jesus. We decree that the enemy must let you go. Even though this was an Old Testament story, amen. It tells us about what Jesus Christ did, amen. Jesus Christ went to the enemy, amen. He went to Satan and he said, let my people go. And so because of the work that Jesus Christ has done, because of his redemption, because of his death on the cross, because of his burial, because of his resurrection, amen. God's people can now be free from sin, amen. We can be the effects of sin, amen. You have to have faith to know that what Jesus Christ did, amen, it was for your generation, it was for my generation, it was for generations to come, amen. We have been set free from the power of sin. Sin kept us from God, kept us from worshiping God, kept us from approaching God. Amen. But Jesus Christ did a work that freed us. Amen. From sin. Let my people go that they may serve me, that they may worship me. We decree and declare that you are free from sin. Amen. You are free from the effects of sin. We break generational curses in your life. In the name of Jesus, generational curses are broken. Amen. Ancestral curses are broken in the name of Jesus and you are free to serve God. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. We pray for the unbelievers. We pray for the believers. And if you're an unbeliever, you can repent of your sins and you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. If you're a believer, 
Don't stand in fear, but stand in faith, knowing that God will fulfill his promises to you. Amen. you in